Jesús. ¿Por qué quieres hacer esto, mi Es intenso. Lindo. Quiero algo para mi mamá. Por lo menos tienes algún nombre. ¿Crees que te parece Godzilla? <risa> Viva. Paddy, Mark, great to talk to you today about Viva uh, with IFTN. Um, Paddy, you might start by telling me a little bit about why you were there and how you came up with the whole idea of this film. Well, I think I I've, I've probably, by accident, I saw a drag show while I was on holidays in Cuba a long time ago and I just fell in love with the raw emotional uh, power of the performances that I saw and I, kind of, in a, I saw them in an unexpected way mm -hmm. and I didn't expect to be moved by them and suddenly found I was. Um, and so that was the, the sort of say very loose uh, beginning of it. Um, I got a little bit of an idea to, for a father-son story set in that world and around the same time I saw Adam and Paul that Mark had written and uh, I just thought it was such a wonderful film mm -hmm. and I was very keen to work with Mark and uh, so I talked to him about it and we sort of went over there, teased out the idea a bit more, Mark then made his own of it and turned, wrote the script or began to write the script as of Viva as it is now and that's how it happened. So it's quite a while back that back you originally... When I first went there it was 1996 mm -hmm. and so that's when I first saw a drag show and then I sort of went back and researched it a little bit myself, went to see some other shows in the early 2000s on a, on a road trip with D uh, Damien O'Donnell and Kieran J. Walsh. Um, so it was a kind of Irish director's road trip to Cuba. I was brought <laughs> along as the sort of fatherly grandfather f figure maybe to look after those two crazy other Irish directors. Uh, and uh, so that's when I got that idea, uh, you know, maybe more specifically, mm -hmm. uh, what it, you know, the, the world that it might be in and then began to talk to Mark about it. Mm -hmm. And it was 2007 when we went over there, uh, mm -hmm. initially, just to take a, a brief look at the scene, and then out of that, I uh, picked up some stories, and I wrote up a story that you just went, yeah. He tells me it was in 2010. It was, but no. I, I know. No, it was 2007 when we went over there. I didn't sit down to write the no, film you until me, 2010. You wrote, you wrote me about 80 pages, and I remember I got them sometime between them and then. I did not write you. You did, you did. I'll send you the emails, you did. Great. Completely. And what did you think of Paddy's idea when you first heard about it? Were you like, well, I was kind of looking intrigued. for something that was outside of what I had been doing before. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the idea of not writing something in Ireland, and then normally that would mean that you write something in England or America, mm -hmm. and uh, and then this offer of something strange in in Cuba came along, and I just thought, well, why not? And then when I went there. Actually, initially when I went to Cuba the very first time, I didn't particularly like it that much. No. I found it quite challenging in a way. Mm -hmm. and, but it's when I went back or when I thought about it afterwards and when I began to listen to the music more and read more of the literature, I began to really fall in love with the place. And then when I went over there again, like, it's, it's, it's sort of a strange home from home in lots yeah. of ways. Like, it's, um, it's an incredibly addictive place mm -hmm. um, and it's full of life, it's yeah. full of life. And sometimes when you go there the first time, it's almost overwhelming, mm -hmm. but uh, especially Havana, I think. And I think it's because it's so idiosyncratic mm. to navigate your way through it. Initially, it's quite hard. So a lot of people go on holidays there, they can either have a brilliant time or they just miss those tricks and they don't yeah. see it really for what it is. Yeah. But also there's a thing when you go there that it feels as if it might be more dangerous than it is. It actually yeah. is. And it mm -hmm. isn't dangerous. Yeah. Like it's very, well, yeah. one of the and so you end up a little bit on edge. So yeah. you kind of, uh, when you first go there. But that's one of the reasons why it's, I think it's so great because it's, it's very safe, yeah. but it has that <laughs> feeling of adventure about it, you know? Yeah, and you can have, you just kind of great fun there. Like, and also culturally it's a treasure trove and the music is extraordinary and the people are extraordinary. Mm -hmm. it was, it's a great place, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, why, why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. And tell me a little bit about how it worked with the script, because you wrote in English. Yes. And you had it translated. Were there issues there that you had that you just came up against in terms of Well, the I mean, initially, I mean, the, the most important thing was to try and write a story that felt specific to the, the island. Mm -hmm. So that was a big part of being over there for any extended period was just to feel what life, the beat of life was like on the street or blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, to, 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 to talk to people and, and um, 
cull their stories in a way and mm -hmm. then you know to make sure that the way that that characters were communicating was realistic to Cuban life mm -hmm. and then afterwards I think the translation was a whole different process mm -hmm. in that you know you get it done and trying to make sure that it was done into colloquial Spanish yeah. rather than a direct translation so what you do is you generally you either write something you, you write some of the stuff in almost in Irish colloquialisms mm -hmm. to make sure that they can't do a direct translation yeah. of it, so there has to be some work done there. But also, uh, you know, I don't write very much dialogue. I don't. It's not a dialogue-heavy film, mm -hmm. and we kept an eye on it really closely after translation, making sure it was going through various processes. Your own Spanish was was good at the time, you know, yeah. and uh, you were able to judge it in that way and. Uh, and then there was several people we fed it through to make sure that, that it was working in that way. I mean, I was, I suppose there was a degree I was paranoid at a certain stage, I remember, that, you know, whether because you're, you're not working in your first language, you know, was, I, was the script missing something? Mm -hmm. Was there nuances that were, was in the English um, script that weren't going through into the Spanish script? So after the initial translation, um, you know, I went through a process where I met two or three other people, actors, writers, different mm -hmm. people, and kind of double checked it and went through yeah. every line. And actually, in retrospect, it was it was born out of a kind of paranoia, um, mm -hmm. but it actually served me very well when it came to direct it because it meant that I had ingested yeah. the script because yeah. I, had, by challenging and constantly asking uh, questions about nuance of language, it meant that I I I'd, I'd basically crammed it in a, f in a yeah, funny kind yeah. of way you know and when the actors then got it they were they had no issues or anything when you were no, going through rehearsals I could slightly police it occasionally because it was a, an attempt to put in more Cuban uh, colloquialisms on set and I'd always have to make sure that I you know I'd give them a bit of space but then mm -hmm. uh, always just have a version without it because there's always that thing if you if you go too colloquial with something um, it, it doesn't travel you know, mm -hmm. uh, and that was something that we were concerned mm -hmm. with as well. Interesting, yeah. Tell me a little bit about the casting then. Fantastic cast. Yeah. And you worked with a, a Cuban casting director. Yeah, Livia Batista, who mm. was our casting director, who's this kind of, I suppose, p powerhouse of a woman who's uh, got great taste and a great reputation and respect in Cuba. Um, and she really was a very, very, we were very lucky that we ended up with her because I think she had a huge significance in, our, in the production and also in the steering, helping me to steer in a certain direction which really benefited the film yeah. ultimately. I was going to go a little more naturalistically I think in terms of casting and cast a, bit, a few more non-actors and we were constantly having a debate, myself and her, throughout the, the pre-production process and in the end I think it landed in a space that was a much better space mm -hmm. um, and she was very influential in doing that. Mm -hmm. So I'd cast uh, Jorge Brugeri early on mm -hmm. in the sense that I landed, the first day I landed to do auditions and casting, I went to meet him and he made me a very nice bowl of soup um, and we talked uh, and he was, he's just a wonderful guy and I knew I wanted him and it was a question just would he agree to do it yeah. and luckily he did mm -hmm. and then the following day I did the first auditions and Hector was the first person to come in through mm -hmm. the door so from you know from ten past nine <laughs> on the first day of auditions yeah. I knew I had my two central cast which is kind of a wonderful position because mm -hmm. then you can relax a little bit mm -hmm. and also you can assemble the rest of the cast in that Around context. That. Mm -hmm. and mixed obviously